Now, Paul, you, you briefly mentioned something about laser communications, and this is kind of something relatively new in terms of sending signals into space. Yeah, now you remember that once upon a time, if I wanted to make a phone call to the United States from Australia, it would have to go via satellite. That's right. But now it goes by a fibre optic cable under yep. the seafloor, and a single fibre optic cable can transport millions of phone calls simultaneously. That's right. Because lasers, being very, very high frequency, can just carry huge amounts of data. Um, and so people are wrong be thinking, wouldn't it be nice to have that same huge data rates in space? Because as we saw before, it's relative to the wavelength. So a smaller wavelength like a laser means more energy and you actually send more data. That's right. Um, now, you can't dangle a fibre optic cable from your satellite as it spins around. <laughs> but you could fire a modulated laser beam up and down to it. Yep, OK. As we just mentioned, Starlink uses it to communicate from one satellite to another. But you can also do it from the ground, have a telescope on the ground that sends a laser beam up to give you information to a spacecraft. Yep. And then a laser on the spacecraft that sh shines down. Yep. Now, this, in principle, is wonderful because it can generate huge, transmit yes. huge yeah, amounts yeah. of data. It just dwarfs what you can do with radio transmission. That's right. So let's say you've got a satellite that's accumulating large amounts of data, like a lot of astronomy ones that we use. Yes. Or an Earth observation satellite that wants to map a huge area. And they, and they also don't want to wait for that data to be slow. You want it now. Yes. The drawback is it only works if it's a clear line of sight. So that means clouds. Yeah, because you know. right, this is the benefit of radio, right? You can go through clouds for the most part. You can also do the day with the laser, you couldn't see the laser, right, at night? That's right. So you probably want to do this at night and you yeah. want to do it on clear skies. So, And of course, you can't guarantee that. Yep. But nonetheless, it's something that's coming along fast. Um, if you have enough telescopes around the world in nice dry desert areas, the same places we like to put our telescopes. That's right. Uh, then probably one of them will be clear. Yep. And then you just have to wait till next time you go over there and download your data at an enormous rate. Yes. So this is something that could well become very big in the near future.